just thinking about the dates here and you played for the Clippers when the Lakers were good <laughs> then the Lakers yeah. went down and you guys came up right yeah. and then uh you had this historic game against Kobe when was it 2007 you, Kobe and the Lakers not just Kobe but in 2007 you had that your career high of 39 again and uh, what was that like did the Mamba talk some trash during that game <laughs> Well, I'm going to tell you, I had a few incidents with, with Kobe, and this is how we became good friends and the relationship of us, us having the same agent. And it started back, you know, early on when I was coming off the bench, and this was a game that was on TNT when I finally got an opportunity to kind of really play. And I think I scored 29 points, but I had scored like 18 in the quarter, and it was on Kobe. Yeah. And so I remember the conversation with Kobe. We were going back and forth talking trash. And uh, after the game, you know, I got a I got a text message from from him said, hey, you know, I I, I love the way you competed, mm. you know, tonight. And that was like the ultimate respect. And from that from that time, we end up building a relationship, you know, that you know was standing until he passed away. And so um, for me, he was one of the guys that you you modeled your game after. A lot of players in the NBA, but I had I had a really great connection because. You know, I knew this guy. We were the first two clients, you know, of Rob Palenka when he started uh, Landmark Sports. So, you know, we had we had a, a special bond when it came to that factor. And then when he retired from the game of basketball, we had another passion because we really we really admired the youth. And from that standpoint, I was already retired for three or four years, mm -hmm. and I started more of more basketball camps out in Orange County where we lived down the street from each other. Mm. And and from that standpoint, he saw that, hey, Corey, you're doing a lot of things as far as what, what girls basketball, you're doing a lot of stuff for, for, for boys basketball. Mm -hmm. and, and he would show up at, at our basketball events, not only just to be there, but to talk to the kids for me. And, and from, that, from that standpoint, he, he's always been a visionary. And to see like, hey, you know, this is what he wanted to do for his, his daughter Gianna because Gianna would come to our to our basketball camps and work out and train and with the boys and girls so you know to see what he had built during that time mm -hmm. because he was like I said he was more of a visionary and looking ahead on how not only he can be a great dad and mm -hmm. what he can do for his community out there wow that's a great great story and I didn't I didn't know anything about that about I knew yeah. about your camps but I didn't know that that he showed up and Gigi was part of that. It's amazing. But I got to hear about something that my researcher producer Veronica uncovered, which I know you've talked about before, but I got to hear about this shark story. <laughs> I, mean, I got to hear it from you. What is the deal with that? That, that Just tell the story if you could. <laughs> so, so listen, man, I, I get a, I get a call from Rob Palinka and Rob is saying, Hey man, I want to, you know, do you want to meet me and Colby? We're, we're out. We're in the ocean. We're going to, you know, swim with great white sharks. <laughs> I'm like, what? Swim with great white sharks? So he said, I'm dead serious. So next thing you know, Rob puts me, puts me on FaceTime. He said, man, we're here. We're here with, in by the ocean. We, we, we're about to get in the water. I said, man, you, you, you're lying, Rob. He said, Kobe is right here. We're about to get in there. So <laughs> all of a sudden I see Kobe in there. Kobe said, man, I'm, we're about to swim with great white sharks. And for, for Kobe, this was a stance for him. And his motto was like, the reason I'm, sw I'm swimming with great white sharks, yeah. I want to have no fear. And when I play the game of basketball, whatever I do, I want to have no fear. And for me to have this, I'm going to swim with great white sharks. And I thought that this guy was out of his mind. And so... <laughs> So they're begging me, like, hey, Corey, you need to come. I'm like, listen, man, you guys are crazy. There's no way that you're getting me to come swim with great white sharks. Right. And, <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. So now Rob is off the phone. Rob's like, man, Corey, I am so scared. Like, I can't even believe Like, he, he wants me to swim in, in the ocean now with these great white sharks. And so, you know, this entire time Rob is talking to me, you know, he's scared out of his mind. But Rob ended up you know, happened to swim with, with great white shots because this was what Kobe, Kobe oh wanted to God. master, master the fear, the yeah. fear factor. Oh. And if I can do this, then there's no person that I would ever fear on a basketball court or in life. 
That dude was on another I level. He was on yeah. another level. I mean, I could just, I know Rob, as you do, I could just imagine him. He doesn't want to say no, but every fiber in his body is like, there's no chance of doing it. <laughs> exactly. I mean, Rob would never say no. Like, yeah. Like, uh, Rob, uh, Cobra, like, uh, Rob, I need you. I need you for this. Uh, yeah. We need to do this. And Rob would like, all right, all right, Cobra, all right, all right, whatever you say, let's let's roll. So, you know, oh. they had such a special bond, and that was Rob's best friend, man. They had yeah. such a special bond. Yeah, no, I know, I know. Wow, I mean, there's probably a million stories you could tell about Kobe, but that one, that one is fantastic. <laughs> what a great story. See, so, I got to I gotta tell you one more story. Sure. So we this was during the time when it was the lockout time. Mm. Um, I, I think it was 2011. It was 2011. Yeah, like round around that time. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of players at that time was trying to, you know, kind of schedule more of like these games, right? Where you can have these big games while the NBA season is not going on. Mm -hmm. We can have basketball games and then you'll be able to pay pay some players to come. And so I'm in Denver, Colorado at this time, and I'm with, you know, some investor, investor friends of mine that were building like, all right, we're going to, we're going to have this, this, this area sanctioned for basketball, NBA guys to come and play. Mm. So they like, Hey, Corey, mm. do you think you could get Kobe to come and play? He said, you know, all right. Well, at that time they had just got Kevin Durant said he had scheduled, he was going to play. So I call Kobe and I'm, I'm at a board table. Right. So I have like, you know, these guys is worth, you know, four or five hundred million dollars. Right. That's sitting around the table. And I said, all right, well, let me let me get him on. Get him on a horn. So I call him and I'm talking. I say, hey, Cole, I'm, I'm here with some investors and they want to know if you can play in one of the games. And they want to know if you were charged, you know, it's a hundred thousand dollars or something to do this. And so I put Kobe on speaker and he's like, uh, 50. Um, listen, if if. If you want me to play, it's going to cost five hundred thousand. Now, if if you want the Mamba Cape to come out and play, it's going to cost you a cool million. <laughs> and, and so, I literally turned my best friend uh, Terrence Doyle at the time. I'm I turned to him, and all the investors is looking like, is is he serious? <laughs> and and I put the phone on mute, and I'm like, oh man, I think it was a joke. And then I take it off mute, and he said, "Corey, by the way, I'm not joking. So if you want the Mamba Cape, it's going to be a cool million." <laughs> I, when I tell you, it, it had to be the the funniest, funniest um, response that I ever seen in my entire life. But oh, also, uh, also like an embarrassment too. Like, man, I'm sitting around these guys, <laughs> and they're trying to tried to put some together and Kobe is asking for a million dollars to, to kind of do like almost like a charity game. So yeah, it was just a funny incident. That's hilarious. As you're telling me that it reminds me of when I used to shoot magic and, uh, and I'd ask him for a smile and he goes, you want the million dollar smile? You want the $2 million smile? <laughs> That's I would have been surprised if Kobe got there for magic. <laughs> Probably.